All right, so I have a confession to make. I eat eggs every single day. I used to be ashamed to admit that openly because eggs have gotten a lot of bad press in past years when it comes to their impact on our health. But most recent research and the US dietary guidelines suggest that the historical strike against eggs, that they're bad for your cholesterol, isn't true and not a reason to avoid eggs. Before we crack open more of the science behind those claims, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content about how food is impacting your health. Hey everyone, I'm Austin, and like me, you've probably heard a lot of conflicting information about whether or not eggs are a part of a healthy lifestyle. Eggs are high in dietary cholesterol, and this caused quite a bit of conflict in the past with nutritional experts wondering about possible connections to cardiovascular disease. But the most recent epidemiological research indicates that eggs alone are not bad for heart health. A 2020 study of more than 37,000 Americans looked at the health impacts of egg consumption and total cholesterol intake. The study found that people who ate more dietary cholesterol were also likely to eat more saturated fat and sodium. Daily egg consumption was not linked to high cholesterol, and the researchers found that eggs were not associated with all-cause or heart disease mortality. So although high total dietary cholesterol was associated with all-cause mortality, eggs are not the food to blame. When we look to other countries within Asia, we see that their egg consumption is actually tied to potentially lower cardiovascular disease risk. So where did all this confusion come from? Well, the truth may have a lot to do with the differences in local cuisine. In Western countries, eggs are usually eaten with red and processed meats like bacon or sausage and refined grains like a nice slice of toast. While in Asia, eggs are integrated into a variety of different dishes. When it comes to the metabolic side of things, research has been mixed with no solid high quality studies to show that eggs increase or decrease diabetes risk. So the real culprit in egging on our nation's widespread issues with obesity, heart disease, and metabolic dysfunction is more than likely the average Western lifestyle of processed foods, saturated fat, and sugary carb-filled dishes. To further vindicate eggs, they're one of the most diverse foods when it comes to micronutrients. They contain a host of vitamins, nutrients like choline, and plenty of protein. That being said, there are also other important factors involved in the nutritional value of eggs, like what the chicken is eating. The fatty acid profile of the yolk and the amount of trace minerals and micronutrients within an egg depend on a hen's diet. So if you decide that eggs are right for your lifestyle, here are four tips on how to incorporate them into your meals. The first, make eggs part of a healthy breakfast. Your best bet is to keep eggs as a part of a low glycemic meal without refined carbs and sugars that will likely raise glucose and insulin. Second, choose your cooking method wisely. Frying an egg in oil affects the health of that meal. Avoid processed seed oils and favor minimally processed oils like avocado oil, olive oil, or coconut oil. If you like to use butter like I do, try to stick with grass-fed butter from pasture-raised animals. The third, go for poached or soft-boiled eggs. Some research suggests that cooking the egg whites while leaving the yolk essentially raw preserves the most nutritional value while still allowing the cooking process to increase the bioavailability of its proteins and kill any kind of pathogenic bacteria. Number four, and lastly, buy quality. Pasture-raised hens produce higher quality, more nutritious eggs, and support more sustainable farming and environmental practices. Okay, so now that you're armed with a little bit more knowledge about whether or not eggs are okay for your metabolic health, hopefully you can arrive to some sort of a conclusion about whether they should or shouldn't be a part of your strategy for better overall health. If you're still not clear, I encourage you to take a look at the full length blog post for a more in-depth look at this controversial topic. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.